Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and today, during our May Mural Month episode series, I wanted to focus on a really special topic, which is an employee mentality versus a boss mentality. And I recorded something very similar to this about two or three years ago, and it was definitely a favorite episode amongst listeners. And I know that because they would message me and say things like, oh, I never thought of it this way. Or they, the people would just talk to me about that episode. And that's how I know that it really caught someone's attention and helped them and just bringing to light a different kind of point of view. And this is something that we doesn't really get talked about a lot. You know, we talk about pricing and what supplies to use, but the mentality that you have to have to own your own business, it's a trip. <laughs> it's, it takes some getting used to. And so I'm just going to talk about my journey and what I've had experience with and what I can kind of look back on now, things that I would tweak and just basically how I've transformed my brain from being employee brain to now being my own boss because it's two very, very, very different things. And it's funny because I think our schooling system treats us like an employee, you know, like public school, which is what, what I did. You know, you have to ask to use the bathroom. You have to, you're assigned certain things. We're basically told what to do until we graduate high school right? And then we go to college, some of us, whatever. Say you go to college. And then again, you're still very much told what to do. Turn in this assignment that it needs to be this many words. Like there's so many rules in our schooling system. So no wonder we get out of it and we're like, tell me what to do. Tell me what job to go apply for. And then they tell us what to do within that job. And that's how we just live our life. And a lot of people like the safety of that, but I saw some opportunity to not only not be told what to do for the rest of my life, which I don't like to be told what to do at all, not just from my husband, but, but from anybody. And I wanted to just create my own rules. And with that, it's not just a, oh, I don't like to be told what to do. I'm going to go be my own boss thing. It really is finding out first off, a purpose more than I don't want to be told what to do. Like, why do I want to do what I want to do? Is it the freedom? Is it having control over how much I make, which is a big one? Is it, you know, there's all these things, but what comes with it is having to figure everything out. As what I thought was just on my own, you know, having to be resourceful, having to just, there's so many problems that arise with owning your own business. And it's so difficult sometimes to figure everything out from scratch. And I think I've kind of gotten used to it by now, but there are some weeks where I'm like, don't ask me questions. I don't know. Like, where do you want to go eat? I don't care. I don't, I don't want to make any more decisions. I don't know. And so anyway, let's, let's just talk about it. I was doing a little bit of research on what Google thought of this subject so that it wasn't just you know, coming from my point of view. And I read a bunch of different articles to get a different variety of opinions. And I came across this one that said... A boss is focused on results and an employee is focused on the process and immediately thought, well, we have to do both <laughs> I am my own boss, but we're also our own employees as well. So that's a fun trip to add to this whole thing too that I, I didn't put in the last episode, I don't think, but we have to be both. And so switching from, okay, I want this results, which is a boss mentality. How do I get there? So say I want to make $30,000 in my art career this year. That is the result that I want. And I want to get better at painting and all the things. It's like you got to break it down then into employee mentality of how would you ask an employee to get there? Well, maybe you'd ask somebody to start pitching for you. Maybe you would do this, this, and that. But so we have to be both. And an employee is thinking, what do I need to do today 
and a boss is thinking, how can I achieve how whatever this year? So a boss is more thinking of the long term and the employee is thinking of the day to day. And I think this is where organization comes in because since we are our own employee, our boss mind has to tell the employee mind what to do today. <laughs> and we can't really be lazy about that. So an employee gets to show up to work and have tasks for them, even maybe videos and showing exactly how it's done. And you just repeat, right? There's a little bit of, there's some free thinking in there, but the majority is just cut, copy, paste, repeat, doing kind of the same things, clocking out, where as a boss, we have to create those processes in, okay, so I want to get more customers. Where do I go? How do I find those customers? Where are they? Probably social media. I guess I should post more. So you have to do all the things, posting in Facebook groups, all the stuff. And I had a realization. I was like, wait, oh, this <laughs> this is where my tutorials and the Artist Academy membership comes in handy so well because a lot of artists, especially in the very first, in the beginning, you're still in that employee mentality. And usually to get a promotion to the boss, you have to do all the things and try all the things and you know, get experience, but you don't have experience yet. So you're looking up to someone who has that more boss mentality, who has the experience to tell you what to do at work every day. And those are my tutorials. That's, I was like, wait. Oh. So I'm helping people get to that boss mentality of saying, hey, this is how I did it. Exact wording I did on this post. This is the exact price that I did. This, these are the exact supplies that I used go and try it on your own. And so it gives a little bit of that process and takes a little bit of weight off of your shoulders, whereas you're not having to just think of everything yourself and give yourself all of these tasks that you don't necessarily know how to do. They're basically there. So that's what the Artist Academy membership is for. It just helps you ease into that boss transition because what happens in your own mural career, especially in the beginning, even now, but there are so many things that go wrong. Like say, for instance, oh gosh, I have to order a lift for a job that I'm going to be working on. I'm like, okay, what lift company is best? Oh, okay, let's try the try this one. We'll try that one. Which one's closest to the place? Which lift do I need? How do I know? How do I operate it? Oh my gosh, all of these things you're just having to learn, whether you can just go watch a video inside of my membership group and know that I recommend Sunbelt because I've used them a lot. This is the general pricing. I have a video of how to use a scissor lift that you get a general idea. I mean, you're still going to need to learn and run through <laughs> on the physical thing, which is actually where the mural meetups come in. We do lift trainings there. You know, I try to help as much as possible, but there's still a learning curve to doing it yourself. And I've noticed that Anytime there's a boss in the room or you're connected to a boss mentality, then I even will revert to my employee mentality saying, solve this problem for me. And I do this sometimes with my husband. I'm like, I don't want to do it. Hey, how, how do I do this? Can you call around? I try to put as much on him as I can in general. Or when I'm on a construction site and there's a foreman there, so a guy that's in charge. So he's the boss, right? And I've done this before where I went up and there was things in the way where I couldn't paint the mural. And I'm like, dang it, how do I get it moved? Oh, I'll just go to the boss that's right here. And I'll ask them, hey, how do I get this removed? Rather than just asking the nearest person to help me remove it or whatever, I will go to that boss person, be like, solve this problem for me. Rather than me going to some individual person and asking, hey, can you help me move this right now? I go to the boss who then goes to the individual person, who then removes it for me. Like it's, if there is a boss in the room, they will get used. And I've noticed this, like when I do some within the, in the membership, when I do art coaching, especially when I do art coaching here for local people, if they run into something, they're like, Hey, can you help me figure this out? But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, you could have probably figured it out on your own, but I can help you. Yes. But people will rely on that boss person because as soon as you take that boss person away, a little bit of panic comes in and you're like, what do I do? 
what I gotta I have to figure it out oh no <laughs> and, and the first time is always like oh and I think this is where doing the one-on-one -on -one mentorship comes in handy because whenever they're running into a problem and I'm helping the artists that I am coaching this summer and it's more of like a higher ticket personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching and when they run into a problem they'll be like hey what do I do? How do I solve this? I'm like, no big deal. This has happened to me a lot. Just do this, this, and that. Like, okay, great. Or whenever they're doing pitches, they'd be like, I want to say this. Is this okay? I'd be like, yeah, that sounds great. And it gives them the confidence to then go say whatever they wanted to say in that pitch. Or, you know, I'll help tweak it and say, I would say this instead or whatever. They're like, okay, great. And it just, it helps with the learning curve and it helps get results a little bit faster having that boss around. But once you know, you know, and you can be your own boss because another distinction between a boss mentality and an employee mentality is a boss takes risks and employees play it very safe. And think about it though. When you're an employee, you typically get a paycheck every week, two weeks or a month, however long it is. It's actually been over 10 years since I've been full bit employed, so I'm actually not sure how often people get paid. <laughs> and, uh, but the financial part of that, the safety in that, will keep people at their safe job forever or for a very long time. Because that is, it's so funny too, because the safety part of it, it makes you feel good, but it's also so limiting because you have somebody else saying, you can make this much per hour. This is how many hours you can work. In turn, I will safely pay you on a regular schedule. And that last part, I will safely pay you on a regular schedule is what keeps people there, which is why employees have that safe mentality and bosses more take the risk. And it is very common for the minute somebody quits their job as an employee, you feel that rush of, oh shit, <laughs> when is my next paycheck coming in? Will it come in? Oh my gosh, there's shady people out there. What if I get scammed? What if, like all these things go through your head and like, or the main one, the main one that went through my head was how long can I keep this up? I kept telling myself, am I just getting lucky this month because I got this opportunity? Or what if I didn't meet this customer this year who referred me and hired me so much? And these couple opportunities that I ended up you know, walking into, they're the reason for my success this year. What if that didn't happen? What if I'm not going to get lucky next year? And the luck thing was the employee mentality that I had of like, how long can I keep this up? And the boss mentality that I've now taken on is... I can make my own luck and I very much can. And so can you. And because think about it, going from having that steady paycheck to cutting that off <laughs> and getting paid as a muralist, sometimes my checks come in a month later after I do a job. Sometimes they you pay me right away. I finished a job and somebody wrote me a check in hand that day. Great. Or sometimes people Venmo me immediately. Sometimes people forget. Sometimes it takes two months or three months to get a paycheck. Sometimes people forget and I have to remind them. But there was, I told this to one of my one-on-one -on -one mentor people. I recently, she was a little worried about getting paid because she's still getting into this boss mentality of financials. And I just calmed her nerves by saying, I did not have one customer last year that did not pay me at some point. Like they, some people took more time than others. And some people had, had to remind, like I said, and, but not one person went out for non-payment. And because of that, I don't think about it at all. I do not worry about people paying me Ever. If somebody hasn't paid me in two weeks, I wouldn't know. I have no idea. Like, it's not until the end of the year where I go through and I'm like, oh, that person didn't pay. I need to send them a reminder. And that happened twice. So I had to send two reminders in January of people that didn't pay that year. But honestly, I have no idea when people pay. I could not tell you if the average person pays in two weeks. I just don't know. I just don't care. Because I know it's coming, because I trust my business so much and that I know that it's going to come or, you know, I'll find a way to collect it. <laughs> and But I just don't put that worry on right now. I don't care. And one thing that's definitely helps me, which is a huge tip in the financial, is save. Have a cushion. Have a huge cushion. 
And just to be completely open, my cushion is $20,000 in my bank account. That might seem like a lot to some people and that might seem like a little, I don't know. But if it goes below 20, I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. Like, mm, I don't like this. And if it goes in the 10, below 10,000, I'm like, eh. Like, but it hasn't done that in years because I like to keep that $20,000 cushion in there because I know I'm fine. Like that I can survive for many months on that if, if needed. That cushion is what helps me not worry. So whatever your cushion is, highly recommended. Just set that. Don't spend below it and you won't worry about it. And it'll come in without you having to nag your customers and remind, like send them a reminder after two weeks when some businesses pay once a month. And sometimes it has to go down the ladder. So the person that I'm working with that, you know, so-and-so company is the in charge of some section and they have to send it to the finance section and then they have to wait till payroll goes out and then they have to get paid by this person. Like sometimes we're on the bottom of the food chain when it comes to getting paid and it takes a while, but give yourself that cushion so that you can have that boss mentality to not worry. And another part, while we're on the whole not worrying thing, things go wrong all the time. The ability for you to just roll with it is a boss mentality. And it doesn't come just by saying, I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> it just comes with experience and running against every single problem to know, or just having a really bad job where you'd, so everything goes wrong and it just like, okay, well, in comparison, every job that I have from now on wasn't like that job. So it's not too bad. And that's, <laughs> that's what I do to keep a positive outlook all the time. I've had the worst jobs, the worst clients, the worst crazy things happen in life. I'm like, well, it's not as bad as that. <laughs> I used to do that whenever I dated back in my 20s and I had a really bad breakup and I'm like, any guy I broke up with after that, like, well, it wasn't as bad as that one. So <laughs> that that's, you know, it's not too bad now. It's kind of like that. You, you have a really bad apple and then all the other ones just seem like a piece of cake. <laughs> so your ability to just roll with it. A boss is, looks at the weather that day and they're like, oh my gosh, it's going to rain for three days, but I only have four days to do this project. What am I going to do? Don't worry about it. Reschedule. Schedule in buffer days because if you've been doing it a while and you haven't scheduled in buffer days, do that because that helps. That Just roll with it because a boss knows, oh, I can't do this project right now because it's raining, but there's a project I have scheduled in two weeks from now that I can bump up and I'll just flip-flop and I'll do that canvas project now and this outside mural project later, easy. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm solving my own problem based on the experiences that I've had and just based on communication with my customers. An employee finds a problem and is like, what do I do? Asking other people, how do I solve this? A boss gets a problem and looks inward and says, okay, how do I solve this quickly right now? And so that way I can keep working or say I'm on a job and the the lift can't be delivered and you're like, crap. I'm like, okay, well, what can I reach with a ladder right now so that I'm not postponed? It's just figuring shit out. That's all a boss does. You figure shit out. And this came to the forefront. Another example, I hired some people to do window cleaning for me, which I now hire out because I don't want to deal with employees. <laughs> and I hired some people to do window cleaning because I don't want to do it. And I just want to paint the windows. I don't want to clean them. And they went there and <laughs> they ran out of Windex. So they text me, hey, I ran out of supplies. What do I do? And my boss mentality is like, go buy more supplies. Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> it's like, do you want me to come deliver supplies to you? No, go buy some more Windex. <laughs> like, and like, it's just so funny because that's, that's what they had though. That's who I employed. It was an employee. And they're like, how do I figure this out? Which I have now learned to, I like to employ boss mentality people. And I don't like to give them, hey, I need you to do this on a certain day. I always say to my virtual assistant and and my podcast editor, Richie, like, hey, <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, it just needs to get done. And I don't ask them to do it at a certain day. I, that's what I actually, that's what I love about Anne, especially because sometimes she'll ask me a question and then if I don't respond right away, she'll just figure it out on her own. She'll search for it or Google it and she'll say, never mind, I found it. And I'm like, 
I love that. <laughs> like, yes, you go girl. And just little things like that. But I've had people work for me in the past where they rely on me for everything, which is okay in the beginning, right? Because there's a certain way I like things done and that there's a learning curve there. But I really like that I'm going to figure shit out for myself attitude. And that's what I have now. And so that's what I know. And going forward, if I hire more people, I want that, hey, I can figure shit out too mentality (laughs) because it's just, it's less on my shoulders. And the final distinction is being organized as a boss, I think is one of the hardest things because there's so much stuff to do. Whereas social media and I did do invoices and do sketches and schedule myself out and just do, there's so much to do, especially for me because I juggle doing Artist Academy and podcasting and doing my own mural business and now coaching and it's just, there's a now doing the mom stuff and like, there's a lot. <laughs> so it's so, being organized is a boss move. And I know that some people are more naturally organized than others, but my major tip is I put everything on a to-do list on my phone and I have it organized to where, okay, I need to do this, this, and this, and that. Because if you rely on your own memory to remind yourself of something, that is not a a boss move. (laughs) It's not going to happen. So anytime I need to do anything, whether it's send this form to this person. I have to put it in my notes and whatever needs to be done first, I put at the top and like, like today, today is my office day and I record podcast episodes today and just all these different things. And I'm slowly marking them off. And then I have a to-do list of whenever I can get it done. That doesn't necessarily need to be done at any time, But this is my hopeful to-do list to do at some point, which is update my website with more photos and do whatever. I actually not even sure what's on there. I'm not, I'm not looking at it, but, and, or actually I want to do some more book promotion in a very specific way. And as I put that on there, but it's nothing that needs to be done today or this week, but it's on there because it's something that I need to do. But this week is, you know, send this form to this person and update the pricing here and do that. And just, yeah. So organizing is a big boss move, whether it's when you're an employee, you know, you have, you have a to-do list. Your boss gives you the to-do list. We have to be both. We have to be both of those things. We have to be our own boss. And one last thing though, it's very tough to go from an employee mode to boss mode, especially like I said, with our school systems and just being told what to do by our parents and all growing up. So to switch that and to be a boss, it takes time. And so to give yourself a little bit of grace if you're if you're confused or you're overwhelmed or whatnot, but it, you do get used to it and it does get more rolling off the shoulder type things. And things just happen, shit happens. <laughs> and you just kind of roll with it the more, the longer you're in it. And then what happens, I've noticed it's hard to go back. It's really hard to go from a boss to being told what to do, even more so. I've had a couple of friends go from trying to make stuff work to they've they've taken on a job and whatnot. And it's just a tough mental change <laughs> having to be told what to do. And there's absolutely no shame in either one because there's it's a lot. It's a lot on your shoulders to be the one who is in charge of everything. And we get to decide what we make and how many hours we work. And I get to be in control of everything and work towards a bigger goal. And I love that. But also when things go wrong, it is 100% my fault. And that is, that's hard to take on. It's hard to take on. Like when, when I went to court last year, it was because I did not specifically go over the budget with my customer and make sure everything was in line beforehand. And I mean, he, he ended up paying because he was a jackass. But <laughs> it, go, go back to that episode. If you want some drama in your life, I went to court last year and I recorded the whole process and it's a whole thing. And it was a big lesson learned. And it was hard for me to be like, God, because I am my own boss. That was partially my fault that happened. And now I know how to go about it next time. (laughs) And like I said, have everything written down. So everything that goes wrong is also our fault. And so owning up to those mistakes is a boss mentality. Whether it's, you know, if you 
make a mistake as an employee. Yes, you have to own up to it, but it's not necessarily, you know, it can be corrected or the boss can come in and help you fix it or, you know, whatnot. We have to fix our own mistakes. And yeah, that's just part of it, I guess. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to end on. But it is May mural month and this month is wholly focused on doing just helping artists become muralists because that is where the money's at right now. That is the big ticket. There's a big fad and a wave going on with murals. Everybody wants it. Everybody is paying good money for it. And part of that, part of becoming becoming a muralist is being your own boss. And that's why I wanted to share that today of all the yeah, just a little bit of insight, but we have the Mural Master Program inside of the Artist Academy membership. Right now it is only $37 a month, very affordable. We've had people go in and now they're on to making six figures and because they took on that boss role of watching the videos, implementing, 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 doing the sales stuff, doing the marketing, posting in the stuff, all the things. I basically have it all lined out for you telling you exactly what to do if you want to be lazy and just have everything completely lined out for you. That's what I do inside the Mural Master. I literally say, go paint a mural here. This is the supplies I use. This is the technique that I use to paint that mural. All the things, like we line it out step by step by step so that it takes the headache and the guessing out of it because we all know that being our own boss is a headache some days and I want to take a little bit of the headache out from it. And so that's what the whole mural master is step-by-step on how to create your own mural business from the ground up. And you can post in the Arts Academy membership. It is a, in our Facebook group, it is a safe place to ask questions. I know that some other Facebook groups you post in there and it's like, they bite your head off because you ask quote, stupid question. There are no stupid questions. And there are people in there who have been in the same position as you, who have gone through the membership already that are making six figures and they're in there just to help. And so if you need, there's some day where you're like, I don't want to be the boss today. Somebody help me figure this out. Somebody help me figure out how to make this sketch better, this mock-up or price this better or whatnot. We're there to help you. And that's why the Artist Academy membership is there because I know how hard it is in the beginning to do it, especially on your own. And it's just, there's so many things. So you might as well make it as easy for for yourself as you can when you can and invest because I am still investing in courses now because I know that there are people out there who do certain things better than me, whether it's making a Facebook group better, learning how to do email better, anything. Like there's little things. And I I buy stuff all the time, not only for that, but for the motivation. I bought this course packet. It was like a millionaire maker course packet. It was all the things to sell courses better And it was like stuff about the checkout page and just little things. And listening to this chick talk, I was so motivated. I love hearing exactly what other people do and why they put reviews in certain places. And then they did an upsell here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so genius. Like, why did I never think of that? And it's just little things that you wouldn't even think to ask the question about she answered it for me for a very low cost. I think I paid $27 for this little bundle and I watched mini courses and I I really, I plugged in and I listened to her stuff. I don't ever actually sit down and watch things. <laughs> I listen while I paint and it made me think, I was like, wow, I'm so glad this lady made that course. And I was like, you know what? That's how I should be thinking of my mural master course. It's like, I am making it so much easier for you. I'm providing the motivation and I'm going to talk about it like that and sell it like that because it does, it helps and it can help you. And it helps so many people just like other courses have helped me. And yeah, be a boss, take advantage of it while you can to help you grow faster because it's taken me a long time to get to where I am. That course creator that I took, and it took her a long time to get there too. And so we bundled up our, our shortcuts and put them out there in the form of a book or courses and whatnot. Take the advice of people who have been there before you and soak up all the information they have. I have a book, I have courses, I have this free podcast, but everything, you soak up everything. It can only help you and it can help you get there faster and smarter and yeah, take the resources. You don't have to figure it out on your own all the time. Bosses are resourceful and there are resources out there, free and paid. 
do whatever you need to make your mural business better. Okay. Anyway, stop rambling. That's all I have. Be a boss and I'll see you. Yeah. Next week. Okay. Have a great week. (laughs) 